Welcome to this year's episode of Ultimate Fodgers. I'm Audrey. And I'm Elena. Today's episode has everything from love songs to how much time students and faculty spend on their phone. Let's, Let's jump, jump right in. in. First off, we have a segment on the annual 1440 fundraiser, the Mathematics Quiz. The quiz was sent to students via email and text message. The quiz asked odd questions like favorite types of cereal and how you prefer your eggs. The cost of your results goes to the Children's Hospital. Through this segment, you will learn about the quiz from the creation to how it works, as well as see the results of the quiz. Love is in the air this month, and to celebrate this, the students of West High have finally received the results of the Mathematics survey. Then everybody gets a little sheet that says who they were most compatible with mm -hmm. and who they aren't compatible with and things like that. The survey was distributed by the 1440 Club. 1440 is a volunteering club at West High. Uh, it goes through the Rotary Club, so like there's the Iowa City AM Rotary Club, and so we have a sponsor that comes every week and she helps us with our meetings. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's student run. The survey and the results come from a fundraising company. The website is Matchematics, and it gives you a bunch of fundraising options and tells you all the different ways that you can use it. So there were sample questions on the website. They had like, if you didn't want to make up your own. Uh, we spent a meeting, so 1440 meets on Friday mornings, and we spent a meeting a couple weeks ago coming up with questions and asking people what they wanted on the quiz. So I compiled those, and then we also picked some that were from the website that we liked, and we put them into our own. The club voted on what to do with the money they raised. It's going to the U of I Children's Hospital. We asked some people to find out what they thought of this matchmaking survey. It was really weird and um, I was paired with people who I really didn't expect. I actually wasn't that surprised. Um, I got a lot of my friends on there, so that's pretty fun. But I did notice that a lot of the girls got like, the exact 10 same guys. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that not a lot of guys may have taken, so like there were a lot of options to choose from. For the guys, I think it's mostly accurate since we're pretty basic. When you first got your results, you like you first looked over at the names, like what was we, what was your brain doing? Like, <laughs> do you want me to like say like, it? Like my you brain can reenact saying, it yes, if you want. Okay, to. okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was in in a sense. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, I got my sister. That was my first reaction. I think I think I'm gonna take it again next year because it's like it's kind of fun to see who you get, and even if you don't like to use the results, um, it's always fun to see. Young love, isn't it beautiful? Speaking of young, the journalists in the next segment asked eighth graders their fears and expectations for freshman year, and then answered their questions by filming what actually happens in a day of a high schooler. High school. 728 hour days of a typical high school student's life are spent here. After that much time, being at West High gets pretty repetitive. However, as a wide-eyed freshman, walking into this seemingly huge space with about a gazillion people is intimidating and terrifying, yet exhilarating all at once. The initial freshman experience and what an 8th grader would expect is largely far from reality. We decided to interview the class of 24 to hear their preconceptions on going into high school. After getting these responses about high school from some freshmen to be, we decided to demonstrate what being a freshman is really like. I'm worried about the workload. A common reply that we received from eighth graders is that they're worried about the workload and heaps of homework each night that'll keep them up. One hour to watch TikToks. Two hours later. It's 11 o'clock. Staying up late is a common trait of a freshman, but at most times, the 2 a.m. homework scrambling is done due to none other than our old friend procrastination. I'm scared that I'll get lost a bunch. 
On the first day of freshman year, you may recall clutching your schedule and feverishly rushing through the hall amidst hordes of strangers, desperately seeking out the right classroom number along a hallway with doors that all look the same. You turn a random corner and find yourself exactly where you started, getting more confused by the minute. The reality is that the first two days of school are hectic, but by the end of the first week, you'll be sauntering around just fine and settling into high school life very easily. I think the honors classes will be really hard. Taking honors or not honors classes can take anywhere from a split second or a discussion to make a choice. In our limited experience in the language field, whether you take an honors or regular class shouldn't be something to stress over. In the long run, the hype is overrated. Here's our lighthearted interpretation of this topic. How's your Spanish 2 honors class going? It's going good. What about your Spanish 2 class? It's pretty good. What's your vocab sheet? Oh, they're exactly the same. What a scam. Oh. <laughs> so that's our video. Um, High school isn't as bad as you think it'll be, but as a freshman, you're just getting started. So you should go out for that new club or sport and meet as many people as you can. Your grades matter a lot more in high school though. Like managing your time, I found is a big problem, but if you actually are good at managing your time, you'll I be fine. I think I got worse at managing my time. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> just work on it. Yeah. Um, you can meet a lot of new people and there are lots of new opportunities. Like there's a tennis team, like we didn't have that in middle school, so a that's bowling different. team. Oh, yeah. Bowling, that's fun. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> it feels so long when you're in it, but then you look back and you're like, it's yeah. already been yeah, like yeah. two thirds of the year. Um, so hopefully we cleared up a couple of your expectations, and, and hopefully you, you enjoyed enjoy our video. Yeah. Like it was pretty fun to make. Yeah. It was pretty lit. It was yeah. Cool. Pretty good. <laughs> See you, squad. <laughs>
Um, well, my classroom hasn't been renovated yet, so there's a number of just little things that are kind of a mess. Um, there's uh, there's a bunch of like pipes and poles like sticking out of the ground for now. Um, and uh, we've got a couple of these outlets that actually um, have shorted out a couple times in class, which has been fun because it kind of makes a loud pop. Um, and one, the cold water in that faucet um, doesn't work. So, How does this affect your classroom environment? Um, it creates little kind of distractions that come up in class. Like whenever we've had an outlet short out, that usually gets everyone pretty surprised and um, off task for a little bit. And that kind of takes a minute to rein things in. Uh, do you wish this to be fixed or is it fine if not? Um, I mean, we're making do with it, but it would be great if these things were fixed. There's some more trivial issues that just get on our nerves sometimes. Here, we've compiled the most irritating and ranked them from least annoying to most annoying. At number six, we have cinder blocks above ceiling tiles. This unusual phenomenon is pretty unique to West and doesn't really cause anyone irritation. We've decided to place dirty windows at number five. This issue is most prominent in Mr. Kerpus's room and can be an annoyance to anyone trying to zone out during a boring math lesson. At number four, we have ranked missing ceiling tiles. This issue makes our school look a little something out of a horror film. We've decided to place broken smart boards at number three. This is something ubiquitous that every one of us has experienced from time to time. Whether the calibration is off or the light is flickering, it can interrupt teaching and it hurts our eyes. We have decided to place broken clocks at number two. This makes it difficult to try and figure out what time it is when it is off or laggy. At number one, we've placed jammed spoon dispensers. You ever just try and get a spoon at lunch, but the dispenser is jammed, so you either get none or ten? For this reason, we've ranked this problem number one on our list. It must be said that not every broken thing at West has gone unfixed. We originally wanted to interview Miss Mohegan about her broken clock, but before we could get the chance, the clock was fixed. The same thing happened to Miss McDermott's smart board. We also must say that fixing the minute problems should not be West's number one priority. Making West an inclusive and welcoming environment for all outweighs fixing the slightly broken clocks or the slow water fountains. In fact, some of these issues have become a bit characteristic of West. I'm not saying they define West, but they make our school a little less monotonous. Problems at West seem pretty minor compared to what's happening in our world right now. For our next segment, our journalists went around the school, testing faculty and students on their knowledge of current events. So, there's been a lot going on in the news lately. I was acquitted by the Republican-run Senate. An American airstrike killed a top Iranian commander. Forming new headline as the coronavirus outbreak worsens. All I can say about Iowa is it was an embarrassment. It was a disgrace to the good people of Iowa. They're being warned that the worst is yet to come. Billy Island! So pretty much I'm going to be asking students and teachers a series of current events related questions and see what they know about what's going on in the world right now. Let's go! Hell no. <laughs> Hold on, wait. I'm gonna look so dumb. Stop playing. With the virus thingy. Yeah. The Wuhan virus. Yeah. Okay, well, um, apparently there's a coronavirus outbreak. And, um... There are Muslims in concentration camps, and something's going on with the government. Communism? I don't even know, man. I don't know. What is it? I was going to say that. Brazil is currently in the Amazon region. Also, Australia. I yes. Suppose. I did not know, know that. It was like, like the U.S. kind of like threatened, like, 
Can you stand something like that? Not too sure about the details. Wasn't it like the threat between like the U.S. and Afghanistan? No, probably oh, the assassination of a general. And oh, Iran. Crap. Isn't it Pete, whatever his name is? And then. What would I be basic if I said Bernie? I don't know. No, that's right. That's right. It, it's Pete and Bernie? Pete and Bernie. Bruh. Um, I know is Bernie and Andrew Yang. Bernie and Joe Biden. No, it's Pete. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, I knew it. Billy Irish? Yeah, let see. I'm a fan. I do not know because I do not care. I don't know. I don't know Republicans like that. Guess the name. You can make one up. Okay. John Spew. No. Oh, um. Romaine. I'll give it to you. Yeah. It's Mitt Romney. Oh my god. Romney. And that was our last question. Good. Wow, there sure is a lot going on in the world. Good thing I have my phone to track all of it. Have you ever thought about how much time you spend on your phone? According to a 2019 study by Common Sense Media, on average, teenagers spend more than seven hours on their phones per day. In our next segment, we'll learn all about how much time students and faculty spend on their phones in their most used apps. Oh my gosh, okay. <sighs> Holy shenikes. <laughs> what the f U.S. teens spend an average of more than seven hours per day on screen media for entertainment, and tweens spend nearly five hours, a new report finds, and that doesn't include time spent using screens for school and homework. Nearly 62% spend more than four hours a day on screen media, and 29% use screens more than eight hours a day, according to a report by Common Sense Media. Next, we interviewed Ms. Hoffmacher to see what she had to say. I probably spend too much time on my phone. Uh, yeah, it's a problem for me, too. I'm, I'm not on it as much at school, probably, but in the evenings, probably another off and on hour or more. Then we interviewed some West High students. It feels like people will like go on their phones like because they don't want to talk to people. You know, like yeah. if we have like free time at the end, it's just like this. Mm -hmm. I've heard that some people have like a lot of hours of screen time on the weekends. So I have like that the time limit set for some of my apps, so that's good. Oh, uh, probably three hours. Seven hours. Eight on a good day? Probably like around three hours. Probably like three hours a day? Probably like hour 15. About five hours? Two hours. Hour and a half usually. Five hours and 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, okay. My average is five hours. Okay, that's pretty good. Four hours and 55 minutes. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, so apparently I have like six hours a day. This uh, is hour 32. It's five hours. Two hours. An hour and 42 minutes. The cell phone policy at West High states that students should have their cell phones and other portable technology devices put away and ringers turned off during class time unless otherwise directed by the teacher. Doing this project made us think about our own screen time and how it affects our daily lives. What's your screen time? Comment down below. Dang, after all that screen time, my phone is almost dead. Are you my phone charger? Because I would die without you. <laughs> that was pretty cheesy. You know what else is cheesy? Love songs. In our last segment, our reporters walked around the school seeing if students could finish the love song. What's going on, guys? It's Zach. 
coming at you with this video and we're just we're just here and i hope you enjoy this video of people trying to guess songs from their lyrics it's gonna be fun they get prizes not hard for anyone uh No, I no. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, you know what? Huh? Just guess. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, what did you say it again? You should have fallen hard for anyone. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a clue. Is uh, uh, take your best guess. Okay. Uh, and it's not George Washington. You sure? That was that was my that was my first guess. I mean, uh, Obama. Sorry. I this song, kind of recent, but not really. It's from. 2018? Mm -hmm. 2018, yeah. Mm. We talked for hours and hours about, sweet, about the sweet and the sour and how your family is doing okay. Leaving, getting a taxi, kissing the backseat, make, tell the driver, make the radio That's play. Shape of you. There you go. That's it. That's yeah. it. This thing called love, I just can't handle it. This thing called love, I, my, I must get round to it. I have no idea. I'm supposed to guess that? I have no idea. This, I, there's a song called, what is this thing called love? But I don't know the, oh, that's telling me it's right. <laughs> Are you gonna tell me what song it is? Yeah, oh. it's crazy little thing called love. <laughs> And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. We'll, we'll see, see you next year with the annual Ultimate Bodgers.